Well, the market's saying Microsoft is the undisputed winner right now. And listen, again, Tim has said it. I think we've all said it collectively over the years. Microsoft is one of the five to seven most important companies in the world. I mean, seemingly everything they do touches our daily lives consistently throughout the day. The question is, though, what's the right valuation for this company? I mean, $13 next year means it trades close to 30 times forward EPS. That's not cheap in this environment. Now, maybe they're deserving of that, and maybe this now... I guess, pole position they have in AI sort of gives them that sort of leeway to have that type of valuation. I just think it's getting itself a little bit rich here. Karen? Yeah, I agree with you, although this does seem to be kind of a big deal, right? Even though I can't even, I can't even understand what happened at AI. I can't understand no. the structure. I can't understand the board made of four people. I don't know how you vote on anything affirmatively with four. An even number. An even number, right. Um, so, I mean, what a coup to get him I think that we might not have seen the end of the AI story, although every hour that goes by that we don't see it resolved with him back there means he's more likely to stay at Microsoft. So I don't see I, at the moment that's the place you got to be. And I think they will be able to hire whatever talent they want. That's a big advantage. Yeah. Although, I mean, with Benioff, that really underscores the sort of up for grabs in terms of talent. I mean, this is a talent sort of area, and you're only as good as your talent. All those engineers, the d developers, et cetera, they're all out there now, ready to be hired, theoretically. I, I think the stakes went higher today. Yeah. I mean, I think, and I think that's kind of what you're asking us. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at the development, both the, what the impact on Microsoft stock is, who looks like they've, they've come out of this a, a thorny situation in the catbird seat, although, again, there's probably a lot to the story that we still need to hear and what kind of controls might, in fact, be uh, over, obviously, key management. But I, I, I just, you know, I look at Microsoft, um, which has added almost a trillion dollars of market cap since this deal was first announced, right? And, and if you look at where the street is in terms of where they are projecting revenue growth, first of all, um, 15 to 16 percent, I think, is roughly where the street has Microsoft growing over the next three years. Pretty decent, solid numbers, um, especially for a company that's going to generate close to $300 billion in, in revenue. Um, but what's the multiple you're going to pay? Based upon the reaction, though, based upon the feeding frenzy and based upon the view that at least they are so far ahead and it's a world. And this is a, a quote that was in the journal, and I think they were quoting uh, someone from, from Stiefel. The point is that Microsoft hasn't been in, in the lead or ahead of the trend in 20 years, in two decades or so. You know, some could be critical. Uh, that's very debatable. But the point is, they are ahead. They're very ahead. And, and that's part of what I think was underscored. Yeah, I'll just say this. At some point next year, uh, Microsoft's going to overtake Apple in market cap terms, and they'll never look back. So I, I, I'm going to tell you, Microsoft will like be the new Apple from here on out. And I don't mean that it's going straight to $4 trillion once it gets over $3 trillion. At some point, I think all these stocks are likely to take a bit of a breather. And, and, and again, digesting all this sort of stuff. Clearly a beneficiary if they're able to get dozens and dozens of the most important um, you know, uh, people uh, from open AI. That being said, this relationship that they had with OpenAI is really important for all of those, um, you know, projections that they gave. I think their CFO said a few months ago, this is going to be the quickest business that they ever have to $10 billion in revenue. If OpenAI implodes, they're going to lose a really important cloud customer. They're going to, you know, they're going to lose a lot of the, the sort of activity that was existing on their cloud platform that helped them achieve better than expected growth in this last quarter. They just announced 29% versus 26%, um, you know, projected. So, again, Again, I don't think it's a, like a layup from here on out that it's all coming up roses for Microsoft. But I do believe in the intermediate to longer term, this does to Tim what he just said. All that being said, I mean, what happens with Anthropic? Microsoft, or excuse me, uh, Apple and Amazon or Google and Amazon have been tripping over each other to kind of invest in that company. They're all ex open AI people. Does Alphabet make a bid for them? Does Amazon make a bid for them? If you thought open AI was expensive trading at 80 times sales, let me tell you, Anthropic's a bit more expensive and the like here. So I think this is kind of like the first inning of what's going on here, but it feels like open AI is toast. It's, it's kind of over. Like, like, you know, they have GPT-4 and now Microsoft is probably, what, six to nine to 12 months away from having something that's maybe as good as that. Um, and then, you know, from here on out, I, I think but it's doesn't probably... That, doesn't, that t doesn't this tell you just how big all this is? And again, yeah. we've got NVIDIA tomorrow, and, and you know, they seem to be uh, the one that's serving the computing needs of, of this world. And, and it was hard to believe that you could have felt that there was more still to price into AI uh, until this soap opera over the last 48 hours.